Do you ever feel like you're missing out on something big? Something that your parents and grandparents took for granted but you can only dream of? No, we're not talking about the good old days of rock and roll or the glory of the Soviet Union. We're talking about something much more elusive and precious, that is, owning a home. Yes, you heard that right. Owning a home is becoming harder and harder for the young generations, who are stuck in a vicious cycle of renting, sharing, and couch surfing. And it's not their fault, as some grumpy old-timers might claim. It's a complex problem that has many causes and consequences and affects us all in one way or another. In this video, we will explore some of the reasons and more. We will dissect the generational wealth gap, the inflation crisis, and the credit crunch. We will also give you some tips on how to get a loan as a young generation, in case you want to seize the opportunity that might arise. Sounds exciting, right? Subscribe to the channel and let's get started. All right, first let's discuss the generational wealth gap under the topic how older generations are hoarding wealth and leaving younger ones behind. Have you ever come across those memes that playfully mock how our parents had their own house and a shiny car in the driveway by the age of 25 while we find ourselves still living in their basement? They're good for a laugh, no doubt, but they also reveal a rather depressing reality. Younger generations seem to be chasing a homeownership dream that's becoming more difficult. Take a moment to think about this. Our parents and grandparents often had more children than we do today. In some cases, they even had kids from two or three different families. It's a stark contrast to the present day where a couple having two kids is considered bold. And if they have a third, they are thought to be brave, if not a little insane. So what's changed? Why is it that our parents could comfortably support a larger family on a single income, while many of us today grapple with the daunting prospect of even affording our first home? Let's dive into this without any judgment. The answer to this puzzle involves various factors. But let's begin by shining a light on inflation, the silent financial killer that's at the heart of many of today's economic problems. Inflation, in simple terms, destroys the purchasing power of your money over time, meaning the dollars our parents earned had more value back then compared to today. But let's rewind a bit and consider another significant factor, demography. Back in the day, our parents' generation had more kids, and this meant there was a greater demand for homes. Picture this. After World War II, the world saw an extraordinary population increase. The post-war period saw the largest economic boom in modern history. People were prospering and decided to expand their families with enthusiasm. It wasn't a bad idea. They were living in an era where making babies was both possible and encouraged, and the future didn't seem as uncertain as it does now. Let's paint a clearer picture. Our grandparents, the baby boomers, are the offspring of the World War II generation. They didn't necessarily need fancy degrees or professional careers to secure well-paying jobs. Some of them didn't even complete elementary school. Yet they found themselves in stable, well-rewarded roles, often in the industrial or commercial sectors. It's worth noting that technology was in its infancy compared to today. Computers were virtually unheard of, and life revolved around hard work that was in turn well compensated. The world was simpler, with post-war institutions providing stability, making it easier for them to navigate life's challenges. And by the way, back then, television was just starting out, and nobody had hundreds of channels to flip through like we do now. Life had a different pace, and choices were more straightforward. Now, let's dive into the heart of the matter, the challenges that today's youth face when it comes to home ownership. It's all part of our exploration of how older generations are hoarding wealth and leaving younger ones behind. The first hurdle we encounter on this journey is the relentless surge in housing costs. It's like chasing a mirage in the desert. Back in the day, our parents might have bought a cozy little home without breaking the bank, but today it feels like we're trying to catch a speeding train. Picture this. You've been saving diligently for years, scraping together every spare penny to make a down payment. Then, just as you're about to make your move, you discover that housing prices have soared yet again, and that little piece of the American dream feels like it's slipping through your fingers. And if that wasn't enough, there's the ever-present weight of student loan debt. Many of us carry this financial baggage like a backpack full of bricks, 
It's like trying to sprint toward home ownership with a heavy load on your back. The cost of higher education has skyrocketed, and the burden of repaying student loans can feel overwhelming. Think about it. You graduate from college, ready to embark on your adult life, but you're already tens of thousands of dollars in debt. It's not the most promising start to your financial journey. Now, let's add stagnant wages to the mix. Despite the rising cost of living and inflation, wages for many young adults have remained stubbornly stagnant. It's like running on a treadmill, lots of effort, but not getting very far. You work hard, you put in the hours, but your income seems to be standing still. This makes it even more challenging to save up for a down payment or to cover the monthly mortgage payments. The impact of these challenges on financial stability cannot be overstated. It's like trying to build a sandcastle as the waves keep crashing down. The dream of homeownership, which used to be a sign of financial stability, can feel increasingly distant. So there you have it. The factors that are making homeownership an uphill battle for today's youth, rising housing costs, the weight of student loan debt, and those stubborn, stagnant wages. These obstacles not only affect our ability to own a home, but also ripple through our financial stability, shaping the financial landscape of our generation. Now, in the next segment, we'll explore potential solutions to address the generational wealth gap under the topic how older generations are hoarding wealth and leaving younger ones behind. Let's start by addressing some policies that could make a real difference. One such policy is the promotion of affordable housing initiatives. You see, affordable housing isn't just a place to live, it's a cornerstone of financial stability. When housing costs are manageable, it frees up resources for other essential expenses and investments. So, let's rally behind initiatives that make homeownership more attainable for all. Next up on our list of policy solutions is student loan reform. We all know that student loans can feel like a heavy anchor around our financial aspirations. Lowering interest rates, providing more flexible repayment options, and exploring forgiveness programs are ways we can ease the burden for future generations. After all, education should be a path to success, not a lifelong debt sentence. But it's not all about government policies. There's something each of us can do to level the playing field, and that's getting financially educated. Think of financial education as your secret weapon in the battle for financial security. It's about understanding how money works, from budgeting and saving to investing and retirement planning. Just imagine if financial education were a part of our school curriculum. Young adults would graduate with the knowledge and skills needed to navigate the complex world of finance confidently. It's like giving everyone a treasure map to financial success. And let's not forget about the importance of financial planning. Setting clear financial goals and creating a roadmap to achieve them is a game changer. Whether it's saving for a down payment on a home, paying off debt, or building an emergency fund, having a plan in place helps you stay on track and make informed decisions. So there you have it, potential solutions to bridge the generational wealth gap. Policies like affordable housing initiatives and student loan reforms can pave the way for a fairer future. And let's all commit to becoming financially literate and planning for a brighter financial tomorrow. Now, Let's move to a crucial aspect of building a brighter financial future under the topic. How older generations are hoarding wealth and leaving millennials behind, that is, establishing credit as a young adult. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far and want more topics like this, comment the word more, so I know. So why is good credit so important, you might ask? Well, think of your credit score as your financial report card. It's a three-digit number that tells lenders how trustworthy you are when it comes to borrowing money, whether you want to buy a car, get a mortgage for that dream home, or even secure a credit card with favorable terms, your credit score will be under the microscope. Now, let's get practical. How can young adults establish and improve their credit scores? It's all about taking small, responsible steps. First, Consider applying for a credit card if you don't already have one. You don't need to charge big purchases. Even using it for everyday expenses and paying the balance in full each month can help build your credit. Another essential tip is to pay your bills on time every time. 
your payment history significantly influences your credit score. Late payments can drag your score down, so set up reminders or automatic payments to avoid this common pitfall. Now here's a trick that not everyone knows. Keeping your credit card balances low relative to your credit limit can positively impact your credit score. It shows responsible credit use. Ideally, aim to use no more than 30% of your available credit. You might also consider becoming an authorized user on someone else's credit card, like a parent or guardian. Their good credit habits can be reported on your credit report, giving your score a boost. But what's in it for you? What are the benefits of having a strong credit history? Well, first and foremost, it opens doors to financial opportunities. When you have a good credit score, you're more likely to qualify for loans and credit cards with lower interest rates. This means you'll pay less in interest over time, saving you money. Having strong credit can also impact other areas of your life. Landlords often check credit when renting apartments, so a good credit history can make it easier to secure the living space you want. Plus, some employers may review credit reports during the hiring process, especially for positions that involve financial responsibility. Building good credit isn't just about securing loans or credit cards, it's about paving the way to financial freedom and flexibility. By following these practical tips and understanding the significance of a strong credit history, young adults can set themselves up for a brighter financial future, all while navigating the generational wealth gap discussed in our video titled How Older Generations Are Hoarding Wealth and Leaving Younger Ones Behind. Now let's move to the next topic from how older generations are gather wealth and leaving younger ones behind. That is the investment value of home ownership. First off, let's talk about home equity. Think of it as your home superpower. It's the portion of your home that you truly own. With every mortgage payment, you're building up your home equity, essentially growing your financial stake in your property. It's like a savings account, but one that can appreciate over time. Home equity is a bit like planting a money tree. As you pay off your mortgage, your equity grows, and if the real estate market is playing nice, your home's value increases too. This double whammy effect can be a game changer when it comes to your financial future. Now, you might be wondering, how do I make smart decisions when buying a home? Great question. Let's dive into some tips to help you navigate the sometimes muddy waters of real estate. First up, research. Start by scouting neighborhoods not just for the cool coffee shops, but also for factors like school quality, safety, and future development plans. This knowledge can help you make an informed decision about where to invest in your dream home. Next, understand your budget inside out. Consider all costs, not just the down payment and mortgage. There are property taxes, insurance, and maintenance to think about. Be sure your dream home won't turn into a financial nightmare. Speaking of financials, getting pre-approved for a mortgage can give you a clear picture of what you can afford. This can save you from falling in love with a house that's way out of your price range, trust me. It's like avoiding a bad breakup before it even happens. Don't forget about the future. Consider how long you plan to stay in your new home. If it's a short-term plan, you might want to focus on properties with good resale potential. If it's a forever home, think about long-term value and your future family needs. Next, seek the assistance of professionals. Real estate agents, home inspectors, and financial advisors can be your allies in this journey. They've been there, done that, and can help you avoid rookie mistakes. So, remember, owning a home isn't just a dream, it's a smart investment. With growing home equity, and the potential for your property to appreciate over time, it's a financial move that can set you up for a brighter future. And don't forget to blend these tips into your own real estate adventure. Explore, budget wisely, get pre-approved, plan for the future, and enlist the pros. Your dream home is out there waiting for you. And with the right knowledge, you can turn that dream into a smart financial reality. All right, prepare to be amazed because we've got a story that'll make you believe in the power of seizing opportunities during the toughest of times. That is, the story of the brothel doorman, a true story of rags to riches. The story begins with a man who was, well, at the very bottom of the ladder, the doorman of a brothel. He had no formal education, no specialized skills, and seemingly no prospects. 
All he did day in and day out was open and close the door for customers who hardly spared him a glance. In the grand scheme of things, he was invisible, insignificant, and to most irrelevant. But as life often demonstrates, one day everything changed. Enter a new manager, a young visionary with grand plans for the brothel. He aimed to modernize, streamline, and make the business more profitable. Gathering the employees, he handed out new tasks, and to the doorman he said, From now on, you'll do more than just guard the door. You'll write a weekly report with the number of clients and their feedback on our services. To which the doorman replied, somewhat timidly, I'd love to do that, sir, but I don't know how to read or write. The manager's response was blunt, Oh, what a pity. But then, I'm afraid you can't work here anymore. The doorman, with the realization that this was all he knew how to do, begged, Sir, you can't fire me. This is all I can do. The manager, with regret in his voice, replied, I'm sorry, but there's nothing more I can do for you. We'll provide you with some money, and I hope you find something else. Good luck and goodbye. With those words, the manager left, and the doorman felt his world crumble. He was faced with the daunting question, what was he going to do now? But remember, in life, when one door closes, another often opens. The doorman recalled his occasional fixes of broken chairs and tables in the brothel, using nails and pliers. He wondered if he could turn this skill into a means of survival. Armed with only a few rusty nails and an old pair of pliers, he took a leap of faith. He decided to invest his money in buying a complete toolbox. The catch? There was no hardware store in his town, so he embarked on a two-day mule ride to reach the nearest one. Upon his return, a curious neighbor knocked on his door. Neighbor asked, Hey, do you have a hammer I can borrow? Doorman replied, Yes, I just bought one, but I need it for work. Neighbor, don't worry, I'll return it tomorrow morning. Doorman, all right then. The following morning, as promised, the neighbor returned and made an interesting suggestion. Neighbor, Listen, I still need the hammer. Why don't you sell it to me? Doorman said, No, I need it for work, and besides, the nearest hardware store is two days away on a mule. Neighbor, How about this? I'll pay you for the hammer and for your travel time, since you're out of work anyway. What do you say? The doorman considered the offer. It wasn't a bad deal offering both some money and two more days of work. He agreed and set out on his mule once again. Upon his return this time, another neighbor eagerly awaited him. Neighbor, hi there, you sold a hammer to our friend. I need some tools, too. I'll pay you for your travel time and a little extra if you buy them for me. I don't have time to go by myself. What do you think? The ex-doorman opened his toolbox and his neighbor selected a pair of pliers, a screwdriver, a hammer, and a chisel. He paid and departed. It was during this moment that something clicked in the ex-doorman's mind. He realized that many people in his town required tools, but had neither the time nor the inclination to undertake the lengthy journey to the hardware store. The metaphorical light bulb above his head went on. On his next trip, he brought more tools than he had sold and saved time by taking shortcuts. Word spread like wildfire through the town and people began placing orders for tools with him. He transformed into a tool seller, traveling once a week to bring back what his customers desired. But the story doesn't end here. Stay with us because we're about to unveil how this doorman turned tool seller continued his journey from rags to riches, from brothels to businesses, and from hammers to hardware. This captivating story teaches us that even in moments of crisis and adversity, opportunities abound for personal and financial growth. It reminds us that setbacks can be the stepping stones to unforeseen success. So, the next time life throws you a curveball, remember the doorman who turned his life around and built an empire. Embrace adversity as a chance for innovation and resilience, and you might just find your own path to triumph. Now let's move to the next topic, the importance of adaptability. You see, my friends, adaptability isn't just a fancy word, it's a superpower that can make all the difference in your journey to success. And it's directly tied to our video title, how older generations are hoarding wealth and leaving younger ones behind. Let me explain how. Adaptability is like having a Swiss army knife in your toolbox of life skills. It's the ability to roll with the punches, to adjust your sails when the winds of change blow, and to see opportunities where others see obstacles. 
In a world where nothing stays the same for long, adaptability is your secret weapon. Think about it. The landscape of work and business has transformed drastically over the years. Jobs and industries that were once considered stable have evolved or disappeared entirely. The lesson here is simple. Those who adapt thrive, while those who resist change often struggle. Now let me throw in a powerful example right here. Remember the iconic Nokia phones? They were once the kings of the mobile phone industry. But when smartphones emerged on the scene, Nokia initially resisted the shift, believing their old model would prevail. It didn't. Meanwhile, companies like Apple and Samsung embraced the change, adapted swiftly, and took the lead. They saw the opportunity in the shift to smartphones and seized it. Today, Nokia's mobile phone division is a mere memory, while Apple and Samsung continue to thrive. And it's not just about big corporations. Let's talk about individuals who have made remarkable pivots. Take the famous actor Chris Pratt. He started his career as a waiter while living out of a van in Hawaii. That's the very definition of humble beginnings. But here's where adaptability comes into play. Chris Pratt didn't give up when the going got tough. He learned new skills, honed his craft, and seized opportunities as they came. His big break came when he auditioned for a small role in a TV show called Parks and Recreation. That role opened doors to bigger opportunities, eventually leading to his iconic roles in blockbuster films like Guardians of the Galaxy and Jurassic World. So what's the moral of the story here? Adaptability isn't just about surviving, it's about thriving. It's about learning new skills, staying open to change, and being ready to pivot when life throws you a curveball. In the context of our video title, How Older Generations Are Hoarding Wealth and Leaving Younger Ones Behind, adaptability is the key to breaking free from the cycle. It's about finding innovative ways to bridge the wealth gap, seizing opportunities, and creating a brighter financial future for yourself and the generations to come. So remember, my friends, when life serves up a plate of change, don't push it away. Adapt, learn, and thrive. The world is full of opportunities for those who can see them and grab them with both hands. Now, let's move to a fascinating topic that is building a business in changing times. A topic that aligns perfectly with our video title, How Older Generations Are Hoarding Wealth and Leaving Younger Ones Behind. Because guess what? Entrepreneurship knows no age and it thrives even during crises. Picture this, the world is in a state of chaos, economies are collapsed, and uncertainty reigns supreme. Sounds like the worst time to start a business, right? Well, think again. History is littered with success stories of businesses that were born during economic downturns. Take Disney, for example. Yes, the magical kingdom we all know and love today started during the Great Depression. Walt Disney didn't let tough times deter his dreams. He saw an opportunity to bring joy and entertainment to people who desperately needed it. Another gem of a story is General Electric, GE, a giant in the corporate world. It was founded during the financial panic of 1890. So the next time you use a light bulb or an appliance, remember, innovation can thrive even in the bleakest of times. So what can we learn from these iconic tales? First, it's all about identifying niche markets. During a crisis, consumer needs and behaviors change. New problems arise, and that's where opportunity knocks. Entrepreneurs who can identify these shifts and pivot towards them often come out on top. Let's take the recent COVID-19 pandemic as an example. While many businesses struggled, others flourished. Think about the surge in online learning platforms, meal delivery services, and home fitness equipment. These entrepreneurs quickly recognized the evolving needs of the population and adapted their business models accordingly. Now, adapting business models, that's a crucial skill it's like having a toolbox filled with different tools for different jobs. During uncertain times, flexibility is your best friend. If plan A doesn't work, be ready with plan B, C, or even Z. Remember Blockbuster? They stuck to their old model and ignored the rise of streaming services like Netflix. We all know how that story ended. But Netflix, on the other hand, saw where the wind was blowing and transformed its business from a DVD rental service into a streaming giant. Adaptation at its finest. So, if you're thinking about starting a business, don't let a crisis scare you away. 
Instead, see it as an opportunity to innovate, solve problems, and serve a changing market. Who knows? You might be the next Walt Disney or the visionary behind the next Netflix. In the grand scheme of things, entrepreneurship isn't just about making money, it's about creating value, contributing to society, and leaving a lasting legacy. So go out there, identify those niches, adapt your models, and let your entrepreneurial spirit soar, even in changing times. All right, dear viewers, now let's move on to the next topic on how older generations are hoarding wealth and leaving younger ones behind. That is, the power of education and learning. In a world where change is the only constant, education becomes your secret weapon for personal and professional growth. You see, education is like the key that unlocks the doors of opportunity. It's the compass that guides you through life's twists and turns. And in our efforts to bridge the generational wealth gap, it's an invaluable asset that can't be overlooked. Think about it. Acquiring new skills and knowledge can open doors you never thought possible. Imagine you're an explorer in a vast jungle, and education is your machete, cutting through the thick vegetation to reveal hidden treasures. Let's talk about personal growth first. Education isn't just about getting degrees. It's about developing yourself as a person. Learning broadens your horizons, deepens your understanding of the world, and hones your critical thinking skills. Suppose you've always dreamt of starting your own business but feel overwhelmed by the prospect. Education is your compass here, guiding you through the intricacies of entrepreneurship. You might take a course on business management, attend workshops on marketing, or devour books written by successful entrepreneurs. Suddenly, what once seemed unattainable becomes achievable. Now let's shift the spotlight to professional growth. In today's fast-paced world, the job market is constantly evolving. New technologies emerge, industries transform, and job requirements shift. But guess what? Education equips you with the tools to adapt and thrive. Imagine you're working in a field that's undergoing a digital revolution. You might be tempted to resist change, fearing it might make your skills obsolete. However, with a lifelong learning mindset, you'll embrace these changes as opportunities. You could enroll in online courses to acquire new digital skills, attend webinars to stay updated on industry trends, or join professional networks where you can exchange insights with like-minded individuals. Education becomes your partner in professional evolution, but it doesn't stop there. Education isn't confined to classrooms or formal degrees. It's a lifelong journey. Whether you're 25 or 65, the thirst for knowledge can keep your mind sharp and your options open. By fostering a lifelong learning mindset, you're essentially telling the world, I'm ready for whatever comes my way. So as we navigate the challenges posed by the generational wealth gap, remember that education and learning are your companions on this journey. They're the wind in your sails, propelling you forward. Education isn't just a tool, it's a treasure chest of opportunities waiting to be explored. Embrace it, nurture it, and let it guide you towards a brighter, more prosperous future. All right, now let's talk about the role of resilience and persistence, the next topic from how older generations are hoarding wealth and millennials behind. In the grand story of life, these qualities are like our trusty companions guiding us through the ups and downs. You see the generational wealth gap, challenges in home ownership, and the quest for financial success all require a good dose of resilience and persistence. Without them, it's like trying to sail a boat without wind, you'll be stuck. So how do resilience and persistence fit into this puzzle? Well, they're the fuel that keeps us going when the going gets tough. They are the voice that whispers, you can do this, when the world seems to say otherwise. It's important to understand that life is a journey filled with peaks and valleys. There will be moments when you stumble and fall, but that's just a part of the adventure. Embracing challenges is like unlocking hidden levels in a video game. Each one comes with new lessons and rewards. Our video title, How Older Generations Are Hoarding Wealth and Leaving Younger Ones Behind, itself reminds us that the path to financial stability may be rocky, but it's a journey worth taking. Embrace the challenges presented in this title as stepping stones to your success. Resilience is your ability to bounce back from setbacks. It's like a rubber ball. The harder it hits the ground, the higher it bounces. When faced with financial difficulties or obstacles in your path, 
Remember that failures are not the end of the road, but merely diversions on your journey. Persistence, on the other hand, is your determination to keep moving forward, even when the road seems endless. It's like climbing a mountain. Each step takes you closer to the summit. Whether you're striving to buy a home, pay off student loans, or build your credit, persistence is your loyal companion. Now, let me tell you an inspirational quote that perfectly reflects the essence of our journey today. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Winston Churchill So, my friends, remember that you hold the power to shape your financial future. Embrace challenges, nurture resilience, and let persistence be your guiding star. In the end, it's not about where you start, it's about how far you're willing to go. And there you have it, guys. The generational wealth gap, its challenges, and possible solutions. Plus, the incredible story of the brothel doorman, proving that opportunities often come disguised as adversity. If you want to dive even deeper into these topics, we've got a treat for you. Check out the link below this video to access audiobooks that dive into economic inequality between generations. It's all about expanding our knowledge and seizing opportunities, just like our friend, the doorman. This video is for educational purposes only and does not constitute investment advice. It is important to conduct thorough research and consult with financial professionals before making any investment decisions. Always assess your risk tolerance and investment goals before allocating your capital. I recommend you watch the next video in our series. Don't hesitate to share this video, subscribe to our channel, and share your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.